trauma and loss groups are some of the worst groups that you can actually be in. And I don't know why it's a trauma and loss group. Like, I, I don't understand why, how can we sugarcoat like our trauma or our loss? There's just no way, like just sharing any bits and pieces is painful for the person sharing, maybe the person reading, it's going to be par- like painful. So I don't know why those are the worst. They seem to be the worst groups. Like some of them are really great. Some are very open. Some of them don't do trigger warning. Some of them, like, you know where you are, you know what you're doing, you know what you're saying, you know what you're reading. But then some of them are like completely different. I'm in loss groups that um, I'm not allowed to share that I've lost out of hospital. If I lost a baby in a hospital, no matter what happened, whether it was preventable, whether it was baby was sick, whether just trauma, just something happened, doesn't matter. I can share that way. But being at home, I'm not allowed to share that. I can say, Hey, I lost my kid seven years ago, but I cannot say I lost with the midwife. I cannot say I lost at home. These are things that I'm being silenced in these groups that I'm still lost parent. Like I still lost my kid. Why can't I say this? Because somebody running the group or somebody at the top is part of this natural birth society of like, they Somebody, maybe they know a midwife, maybe they're related, maybe they are a midwife, maybe there's doulas running the group. There's a lot of stuff. And what people don't know, as I've watched over years, years of being in and being tossed in and out of birth groups and parenting groups and kid groups and all this stuff, a lot of them are run by doulas and midwives. They might not tell you right away, but if you start looking at the post and you start seeing stuff, they say, I have the perfect oil for that. I got the, I got the herbs for your child. Rub it. Oh, your kid's sick. Rub this on their feet. Your kid's not sleeping well. Rub this on their feet. They have all these magical remedies. And I've seen it for many, many years in all these different groups. And I always wondered why I was not allowed to talk, why I was not allowed to share my experience. And then it starts coming out. Well, the reason I'm not allowed to is because there's somebody that's just like my midwife out there spinning their story and their web of lies And all these women are paying them a lot of money into like feeding into, oh, I can, I don't have to call my pediatrician. I don't even need a pediatrician because I have magic herbs by this lady who's a midwife who's been doing it forever. Like that's literally what's going on that people just don't realize. And I've noticed a lot of groups, even lost groups, even ones that I I loved. I have some groups that I was like, oh, it's so great. I can actually share here. After a while, the midwives find out about them because of their... I'm just going to be honest because of their own losses. They start kind of searching the loss groups because they need to kind of find us and track us and keep an eye on us to know what we're saying about them. And they do do damage control. So they start working with like the people that run the groups. It becomes this big, huge thing where they're helping them. And um, I want to help you with your rainbows. There's another whole thing that comes in. And I I see that a lot um, right here in Vegas. I see it a lot that the midwives try to get in with like lost parents. And I mean, we're talking lost parents from lots of reasons. Some people have just like genetic stuff where they need medical care for their baby to get the medical care that they need for them to get the medical care while pregnant. And here's these midwives telling them, you don't need that medical care. You, that's not true. That's just doctors lying to you. And that has always like, oh, it just really, it irks me in ways that I can't even explain just because I'm like, for God's freaking sake, like that's, don't lie to them. You know what I mean? And don't tell them whatever. Like if you've lost a baby, my biggest advice for anybody, everybody, it doesn't matter where you lost your baby, doesn't matter, whatever. Please, if you have another pregnancy, get help and please go to a hospital and have medical care because you just don't know. And if you've already lost one, don't, don't do any of that. You need comfort. You need care during pregnancy. And then you need the best that you can possibly get is in a hospital with providers and with people that are going to take care of you. And I just, I hate seeing in groups, lost groups, groups, especially in trauma groups. Um, don't have your baby at a hospital, have your baby at home with a midwife who's not going to monitor you, but you've already lost a baby. I just, I just can't, I can't, there's just, there's no reason for you to ever tell somebody that lost a baby to have their baby at home with somebody not paying attention to you at all. Like, no, because next time you could die next time. Like it just, it really bothers me. So I see it a lot in uh, loss and trauma groups. And there is this like 
give them this fuzzy feeling and this positive vibes and all this, whatever. And I've actually seen, um, people that lost their babies and they're planning VBACs at home and they're on asking for VBAC experiences at home. And people are like, read Ina May and all this stuff. And yeah. And I'm just like, and I get on there and I'm like, have you sat down with your, you know, with the doctor and gone over why you ended up with this situation before? And have you gone over and figured out maybe where you can give birth to have a VBAC and you can have VBACs in hospitals, just in case anybody's wondering, you can have them in hospitals, not midwives aren't the only ones doing it. So there's just this whole thing around it. And unfortunately somebody is generally making money somewhere hidden that you might not realize there's a doula or there's a midwife. And yes, you might go to a group and they're like, wow, there's lost people just telling their stories. And there's people telling me to get medical care and go in and call your doctor. Those are the people that actually care about you. <laughs> Those are the ones that actually care. And they have seen people lose. They've seen trauma and loss and they don't want it to happen to you. I agree. I, and I don't want to fall too far down. I'm probably opening up a whole Pandora's box here, but, and I'll probably get doxxed again now for just saying this <laughs> for real. Some of these though, I have to say some of these groups, so you hit on the financial incentive with these doulas, with these midwives, the fact that they're tracking lost parents or parents who've had poor outcomes under their care. And so then they get connected somehow to other clients through that as they're infiltrating these groups and doing things. So as they're infiltrating these groups and then the groups already have people with a certain ideology, I just have to say that there are so many overlapping elements of the groups that are hyper-focused on intervention free out of hospital, like for the non-financial incentives to it, there are just some people, the things that they will promote, they have to have knowledge that there's danger and extraordinary risk to it. It has so many elements of a Munchausen's by proxy, which I know has a new name now, but there is so many overlapping elements to this weird projection of this ideology onto other people. It's one thing where people may land on it themselves and you just hope that you can kind of steer them in the right direction for something that's safer for them and their baby. And, you know, we all have these complicated stories that lead us to where we are, but like what would take you to then thoroughly convince people to do something so dangerous? These ones that are just constantly sure have a TOLAC in your living room, after, you know, three repeat or three prior C-sections and things like that, outside of the ones who are clearly just trying to, again, tout their birth keeper business and doing things like that, there is something so off that I can't put my finger on that I can't fully articulate, but I just am putting it out there. There's something so off around like the almost psychological profile of these people who are essentially cheerleading people to do something so incredibly dangerous to, because you have to just sit there and think to yourself, to what end? Like, why are you so, why are, why are you the way that you are? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this to innocent people? I can only like Michael Scott it right now. Like, why are you the way that you are? Why are you doing that? But I can't think of any other way. It's, and I, I do remember a couple of um, different writers who had written about that at, at one point or another and already kind of pointed out that overlap, but it's something I've always felt as well. I'm going to name drop. I have no issue doing this. Um, Ruth Rodley, Rodley comes to mind um, and she has and still does um, admin and owner of multiple birth groups. And I was in that um, after or even before my VBAC uh, of my own daughter. And I don't think she has any monetary gain from any of this um, back then or now that I'm aware of, but, and I don't understand it. She never had any vaginal births. She's always gone to the hospital and had C-sections, but she loves to tell other people um, to stay home. And I don't, I don't understand it. Multiple deaths. I think, um, and we talked about it recently about one in particular, um, that she allowed medical advice and even gave it in the, in the birth group and maybe a couple years ago. And that baby ended up dying because of that medical advice that, you know, she took it. And ultimately these groups are on the hook for that death. Yes. These people can make their own decisions, but they don't have, 
you know, they only have the one side and they hear it from the, the you know, these owners and these people that are very popular in these groups um, and they listen to it and they weed out all the, the advice they don't want you to hear. Um, I know one of the other admins we have in the VBAC group and how she came to our group was I found her in Ruth Rodley's group and she had a rupture. She lives in the UK and she was in the hospital um, and they just turned they just like changed the narrative into where this um, person was thinking and blaming herself for her rupture. And so I'm like, no, you know, just come on over to this group, you know, we'll listen and everything. And it was just, it was sick actually seeing it happen and seeing them change her narrative of what happened when she was the person that knew what was going on. And we had to kind of like, you know, she came over to our group and kind of told her story and just seeing from, that Ruth Rodley's group to our group of how different um, her post was handled. You know, they, they, like you said, Megan, and I think Danielle said it, they do not, um, if you have a home birth death or a home birth um, birth injury, um, they don't want to hear about it or they, they, they censor it to where you can't say it was home birth or with a midwife. But if it happened in the hospital, you know, oh, game on you're allowed to say that um and they love those stories because they're going to say see this wasn't safe i think there's a level of like i don't want to say adrenaline junkies but it's kind of like that like when you do things where there's people that they'll jump out of airplanes and they'll go on those these crazy mountains like they do all this adrenaline high adrenaline things and that's just like normal thing for certain people but there's something about doing these things that maybe, you know, from a doctor's perspective for medical, where they're like, this is dangerous, like going overdue. We already know going over 41 weeks, even getting, getting to 41 weeks is very dangerous, but we're talking people birth at home and they're 42 weeks or whatever they are. And they have like, this is like the idea that they push is like, going overdue is like cool because it's like when you do it, it's kind of like a badge of honor. Like, look at you are better than statistics and studies and doctors and medical and like, yeah, but the side that people don't see is that there's a lot of bad that happened from just that one right there. Just that situation that happens all the time. I know many, many, many women that have lost babies from overdue babies. But yet I know many, many women that have had babies at 25 or less than 30 weeks and their babies are alive. So our kids that were overdue, fully grown, fully babies are not here, but then these preemies are alive. Do you see the difference here that people aren't talking about? And that drives me nuts is there's, there's something, there's something a little bit egotistical and I can say that because of my own experience with midwives and stuff like that, is they have to do this, like, look what I did. Look what I told you to do. And it worked out, but we don't actually know if everything kind of worked out. A baby might have survived, but how bad did the mother tear that she didn't go to the hospital and get stitches or get medical care that happens all the time, <laughs> all the time at home that nobody's talking about. And I actually personally have a friend here in Vegas who shared her story after I lost my kid, <laughs> she never told me about it before. And she told me, please don't tell anyone because she did want to get booted from the community. Guess what? A couple years later, she got booted from the community because she got fixed. And therefore you're not part of the community anymore. Cause they want you to have lots of babies. You're not part of their money making machine, you know? So unfortunately that is what I've learned over all these years of, I mean, I've lost my kid over seven years ago. I've seen a lot of things where it's like, they're pushing it to this limit where mm -hmm. the only ways I can explain it is it's something about something with ego of like, look at how amazing I am pushing the, the, the limit even farther and farther and farther. And look at, we don't have to listen to doctors. We don't have to listen to medical. We become these superior beings somehow. But the thing is, is that how many of us are actually, is it actually working out for, and how many of it is not working out for us? Because you don't get to share if you, if it didn't work out for you, if you went to the hospital, you're not even actually allowed to share that by the way, in home birth groups, if you went to the hospital, you didn't even have to get a C-section. You went to the hospital, had a vaginal birth, you survived, your baby survived, and you're not allowed to speak about it. You cannot share that. 
Now, if you went to the hospital, ended up having an emergency C-section, maybe your baby lived, maybe your baby didn't, maybe like, so maybe they did live, let's just say. So now you had still, your midwife, even maybe she went with you, she held your hand, you end up having a C-section, your baby lived. You cannot share about it in home birth. You're not allowed to share you had a C-section either. So mm-hmm. there's all these narratives and all these stories and all these people that you're taking out. And there's a lot of us. You would be surprised. I'm actually in home births, um, C-section groups. And, um, I, I'm not allowed to share that I've lost a baby there. So I listen to what they have to say. And I don't go there very often because some of the stuff is really way too much for me to listen to. Cause they do, they cheer each other on like having a home birth or, um, a, after their C-section. But I will tell you, there is a lot of women that are waking up and saying what my midwife did to me was wrong and led me to this and put my baby in danger, put my life in danger. And there is a lot of them that have tried to pursue some type of legal action, tried to change laws. There's actually a lot more of them than people would like us to know that they exist. They are out there and they're all over the place because it's happening all over. This isn't one magical state that's having problems. This is all of our states. This is all over the board. This is all over. This is in Canada. It's happening in UK. This is Mm -hmm. happening all over the place. That this is the out of hospital. There's stuff happening that we are not allowed to share about. And that was another thing is I know people with Canadians and they're like, we can't talk about it because, um, things be get investigated. They have like their own investigation. So they can't even share their stories online because they're being investigated and it could ruin their what's going on. So it's like, these are just things that nobody thinks about. Like if you are in an investigation in any way, even if it can be legally, they can legally be charged, they can't share about it. And then for the ones of us that we try to pursue and nothing works out, we can share about it, but nobody believes us. And the home birthers say, if, it, if the midwife did wrong, then she would have been charged criminally and she would have gotten in trouble. Well, there we go. Full circle of how they can take my story and say why my, my death is now my, the death of my son is, happens to be my fault and not my midwife's fault because obviously it wasn't that bad or the state would have charged her. <laughs> so what can they do? And I see it all the time. I see it all the time. And it's not just me. I see a lot of other people out there. And there's a lot that it's like, wow, like I cannot tell you how many people I've actually bumped into just randomly that I end up kind of almost defending. And I'm like, man, if I don't add them or something, I'm going to lose them. They're going to just be lost in the, the, the wave of them trying to delete us because they do. If you don't catch the comments quickly or the post quickly, they're gone. They're gone very, very fast. Even in groups that say right away, if you are a midwife or a doula, you are not allowed to share her. But guess what? The midwives and the doulas are still sharing there. They're still saying stuff. They're still saying, come with me and I'll give you a rainbow baby, you know, like, because I'm magical or something, but it is happening. And I don't know why, but this is the way that it is. And it's been happening for a very long time. And I don't know, unfortunately, I'm just seeing that it's kind of expanding as we're getting more social media outlets, that there's more ways to expand and, a lot more of them are making more money off from just like you taking like their little conference things. We see it all the time. I get ads <laughs> where it's like be a million dollar doula or something like, and I'm like, who the heck is the million dollar doula? Like you don't make that much money per birth. Like how are you making a million dollars? Like, you know, and so me, I got to click on this and see what it is. And then sure enough, you can go take their little weekend conference or seven day or so many weeks or whatever. And you're going to pay $5,000. And I was like, Oh, that's why that doula is going to be a million dollar. You know, she's on the internet being like, pay me $5,000 to tell you how to have a magical natural birth experience. And that's, what's happening is that there's a lot more they're everywhere. They are everywhere where it's like, even if they're only charging 500 bucks a pop for some magical advice, like they're all over the place with a lot of, they're making a lot of money for very, very dangerous information. Like, holy crap is the dangerous stuff out there. Like well, the VBAC stuff is really, really scary. I think out of all, all the stuff, it's the VBAC stuff that scares me the most. You know what I mean? Cause you know, we know it's dangerous. Like you said, we see it. Um, and like you were saying, they just, they're quick to delete as well. If anything doesn't fit their narrative, delete, censor, um, even 
we've seen lost parents actually deleted from these groups we've been referring to, Ruth Rodley's group when they had a home birth death, or even if they've transferred, they don't let them share that story. So if you're not on that post and see it or, um, you know, see it right away, it's they're quick to delete and to delete all the posts and comments from that person. So you can't figure out anything and that group can't be held liable. And we've seen it over and over and over. And like Danielle, you said, these doulas and um, I would say doulas are, are pretty bad. I mean, their mindset, most of them are uh, money. And I think during COVID they were able to reach more people because of the online classes now. And I think that's the biggest uptick that we've seen. And, and they're always in these birth groups. I mean, most of them you can see on their profile because it's all over, um, but some aren't. And then when you do, like, if there is a post, I know specifically in the VBAC group, we don't let, let the in thread replies um, because medical advice can be missed and you will see doulas. Like you'll see this medical advice and be like, you know, it kind of teeters like people that don't know better. Um, oh, well, she told me to do, let's just throw, throw out something like even dates, like, okay, there's really no harm in doing dates, but then you start seeing more on in that reply. And, you know, her business is birth. Her business is birth and she could be taking it to um, messaging and stuff like that. But, and you have to be careful in these birth groups. They're all over the place and they're always giving medical advice or um, they're getting smart about it of, well, did you ask about this or did you try it this way? Or, you know, and they're getting really sneaky. Um, but like you said, I mean, it's just, it, to me, it's it's scary with these birth groups. Um, what you're saying with the birth trauma groups, I'm not in, but for them to censor and tell you what you can and cannot post. And when that is part of your story, even if they don't want to hear it, um, it still happened. And I don't understand the censoring um, or telling, especially lost parents. I know um, there was a trigger warning video that was put out, um, but the trigger warning, it goes kind of hand in hand, or, you know, we don't want your story in this group because it doesn't fit our narrative. And you were just like, it was rare for it to happen, but they always, they, they're good about censoring people. They're good about turning the narrative, um, changing people's um, perspective of their own birth. Um, and we've seen it when people come into our group and, you know, they, they feel like they failed and it's like, you have not failed at all. Um, and we try, you know, we try to work that out. And Megan, like you said, there's some things to be said about therapy after any birth. I mean, it's a traumatic day for anybody, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. I will say that. I mean, there's a lot of things you don't expect, um, but especially when you have bad outcomes. Therapy will go a long way. I think one of the things that is not necessarily specific to natural minded groups, but it's the narrative that birth is intrinsically warm, fuzzy, romantic, wonderful, amazing, incredibly positive, empowering experience. And I have watched animals give birth and frankly it even when it's just a really fascinating process nothing about that made me think wow that that animal is having such a great experience no they aren't they're going through a natural process completely beyond their control and that is basically the definition of a traumatic experience mm -hmm. Um, so when people come along and they say, okay, I had this experience that doesn't fit with that whole glowing rainbows and sunshine birth vibe, I have a feeling that the owners of those groups or the moderators are start feeling uncomfortable, like, well, we don't actually want to kick this person out of the group, but we got to maintain this warm welcoming idea and there's i don't know if anyone read to say nothing of the dog it's a time travel book anyhow and the time travelers are in victorian england and 
they have a discussion that starts with a pregnant cat where somebody is rudely interrupted from saying, oh, this cat is pregnant. And they said, well, we don't talk about that in the upper class uh, families. And they're like, whoa, how did they learn about it? And they're like, well, on their wedding day. And they're like, how does that go? And they're like, well, <laughs> traumatic would be one ex you know, one description. So it's like, yes, you should, when you educate people about birth, it should be about everything, everything birth related, not just the fuzzy stuff, you mm -hmm. know, that you're going to need support, that you're going to need to mm -hmm. set up with your partner. If you have one, sharing the very, very significant burden of childcare, uh, it, this, this whole fuzzy thing is like, I, I love the idea. I think it's an amazing concept, but there's a lot more that goes on to it. And, and leading people down this idea, giving them this idea that everything is going to be great, and then dismissing them when they say, well, everything wasn't great. Everything was pretty great except for this stuff. And then just saying, no. Let's talk about something else real fast. It mm -hmm. it's just doing people disservice. Period. I wish that the people who do like the people giving the dangerous advice. I think it's so flippant given as well. I hardly think anybody stops to think of the actual. How would you actually feel? knowing that you proposed a person do this and you strongly suggested they do this and now their baby is dead. And I don't think many people think that through when they're doing that. They're so into this pack mentality of the echo chamber they're in of birth is safe. Like you said, Ange, birth is romanticized. It's this beautiful thing. It's this. And they're cheerleading to what, again, though, where I say, I do think that they have an understanding of risk and how dangerous it can be. And they're just choosing to be deliberately obtuse about it and cheerlead people down a certain path. But I wish more people would stop to think, what if your advice, what if what you suggested, what if you're pressuring into people? Sure. Can people make those own choices? Yes. But like getting the impact of everybody around them really telling them that this is safer that's we're humans like we've lived for years and years and years with that as a survivalist mindset of having people's opinions and influence over us and if you have a lot of people convincing you that this is safer or this is better or this is what's right for you it can be very powerful and just think about think about how that it would be to know that you said to do that to you cheerleaded somebody to do this and now their baby is dead or they are or both of them or they have this terrible outcome i just don't think people think about that a lot of the time and in for things outside of that um in some to some degree there's responsibility so in in other areas so i think of the one group with the holistic birth keepers who they have uh, they have gone as far as seeing publicly advertising that they see women for unassisted deliveries who are drug addicted to drugs. And I mean, that's just something, an unassisted birth is dangerous in and of itself. And now you're taking a baby who's been exposed to drugs throughout a person's pregnancy and is not going to get the immediate care they need after a birth, which is the, obviously necessary. So again, those are like, extreme but those extreme ones those extreme side of things they also create the space for the it to ramp up to that and for the quote-unquote smaller scenarios to really slide in there but can still have terrible outcomes and terrible circumstances so I don't know if that all makes sense what I'm saying but I do I think I it bears some there there is responsibility to bear in these pack like groups that really put out such dangerous content and such dangerous advice. And I know that it's very difficult to regulate and I don't even know, always know how it should be or what that would look like, but there's responsibility, be it whether it's technical legal responsibility or just human and societal responsibility, there's responsibility in what you're putting out 
out there. 